In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to turn your on-camera flash into an off-camera softbox. Best of all, well, we're gonna use cheap reflectors to do it, and this is something you can do on your own with the existing gear that you already have. So let's dive in. All right, guys, so meet Devin Zweck. You can find her on Instagram. We will throw up her tag. Now, there are a lot of reasons why something like this would be handy. One, you might not yet have purchased a softbox. They can be expensive, and you might be working your way up in terms of gear and what you're investing in. Two, you might be caught in plenty of different shooting situations where you just don't have the gear that you want with you. So I'm gonna show you in this video how you can turn just a standard reflector or scrim into a softbox while using just an on-camera flash. Let's start this off by just getting a standard ambient light shot and we're gonna go step by step through what we're about to do. So thinking back to the camp framework, the first thing is just to get our composition. I just want a standard shot of Devin to kind of show off this technique. So Devin, step a little bit close to the camera. Right there is great. I'm on a 50 millimeter Sigma going through the 5D4 and I'm just gonna tweak my, uh, my composition just a little bit. First, let's just start with what this would look like with ambient light. So 1200 F2, 1600 ISO. This is our shot. It is very orange, nothing really to look at. Let's go back and fix that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is when I'm doing this technique, I like to turn out whatever room lights I possibly can that are interfering or causing mixed lighting. The reason is when you're bouncing an on-camera flash, we don't have a ton of power to begin with. So by actually mixing the ambient light and getting down to a little bit of a darker and cleaner look, it's gonna help. We don't have to run as much flash power. So let's go back now. Because the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock out the rest of my ambient light. In this scene, that's great. If you're working outdoors and you're using this technique and you're shooting in bright daylight, you might not wanna knock out all the light. You might just be using this to add light to your subject. It works completely well. In fact, this is the exact technique that we showed in Lighting 101. So let's go back to the camera because step two is to dial in our ambient light. Okay, so I'm gonna lower the ISO now down to 400. We're gonna take that shot again. And now you'll notice the shot blacks out. We've knocked out most of the ambient light in the scene and that's great. That's where I want it. So now let's go to the M part of the camp framework because we're about to modify that light, right? So, well, we need to add and modify. So if I point my flash directly at Devin, well, I'm gonna power it on and let's just dial it down to like probably four. Take a shot and we get this shot, right? So it's a little bit still on the bright side. We could still use this exposure, but I'm just gonna lower it down a little bit. So it looks fine, but it's that direct flash look. And if we're not going for that edgy kind of rough look, then we'd probably want to switch this up. So what I'm going to do now is place a reflector into my shot. You can use any stand that you like for this. There are inexpensive $20, $30 stands on Amazon that will hold a reflector. I'm using a C stand because it's just what we have. On this, you'll just see a standard scrim. Okay, so this is just the white side of a reflector. That's all you need is the white side of a reflector. Let's go ahead and turn this towards our subject. And what I'm looking at here is to make sure that the angle kind of goes directly at Devin right here. Now I'm gonna turn my flash into this reflector and fire it directly in. Okay, so you're gonna notice an immediate improvement with this. I'm gonna dial up the power because we are gonna lose a little bit of that light, okay? You will notice an immediate improvement. You're gonna see two sets of shadows. So if we compared this first to kind of our ambient light shot, it looks a lot better, right? If we compared this to the direct flash shot, again, this light still looks better. It looks like a, a softer, like soft box basically. But you'll notice that we're still getting this shadow underneath Devin's chin right there. That shadow is because we're still seeing some of that flash firing directly at Devin. In fact, I wanna point this out. So come on to the other side right here. Devin, I'm gonna take your place for one second because standing from right here, I want you guys to actually look at that flash. So Carlo, you step right there. Now you guys can see from your angle, anytime this head is exposed, 
you're getting direct flash coming straight into the camera. So what I need to do is close off that direction of light and zooming is not gonna do enough of it. Now I could turn this away, right? I could turn this up, I could turn it away, but that kills what we're trying to do with bouncing into this reflector and creating our softbox. So what I'm gonna do is grab a grid. With a grid, I can close off your guys' angle, the subject's angle to that flash and now fire it directly into the scrim. Now, one other thing that I wanna point out, Carlo, go ahead and point at the scrim. When you are testing to make sure that your light is set up correctly, make sure that you're filling out as much of that scrim as possible without having any of this light spill on the outside of the edges. If you have a modding light in the flash, turn it on, because it's gonna give you a good idea of what's being hit. So I wanna make sure that nothing is spilling out. I also wanna make sure that as much of it as possible is filling out. So we actually have it in a good place right now. We're filling out most of this. I might bring it just a little bit this way and maybe a tiny bit down right there. Okay, perfect. So now I'm gonna take that same shot. Perfect. Now check this out. This ambient light shot right here to direct flash to our own softbox. In fact, we are so close to a Rembrandt lighting pattern right now. All we need to do is adjust the angle just a bit more. So what I'm gonna do is just adjust this angle a little bit more onto this side. I'm gonna fire that flash right into it again. And coming back here, we have now created a Rembrandt softbox with just our on-camera flash. The coolest part about this is you guys can do this anywhere. We used a $20 reflector that you probably already have. We used an on-camera flash that you already have, and you can use any camera you want. Now, when you're doing this outdoors, just remember that you're probably gonna be using your on-camera flash at full power. And also, I would give you a tip that when you're utilizing this technique, it's best to shoot with kind of closer lenses. So anywhere between a 35 to 70 millimeters is kind of the ideal range, or 24 to 70 is the ideal range. When you start getting too far back, it's hard to throw the light where you need it to get it to your subject. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a like. In addition, what you just saw right now was a small excerpt from Lighting One. This is the first of a four-part flash and lighting series that teaches you literally everything there is to know about location lighting with flash. And Lighting One is all about getting the most out of just your on-camera flash. So be sure to check it out. It's on srloungeworkshops.com. In the meanwhile, you guys can subscribe to the channel, comment below, let us know what you guys think, and be sure to follow Devin at Devin Zweck on Instagram. You guys can also follow me at PyGersa, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.